Hey everyone, it is Uncork with Kate, and we are here at our third stage of our Winemaking 101 class. We need to bottle the Sauvignon Blanc that we have been making over the past few days. So if we look at our wine, you can see that it has cleared. Um, it, there should be no cloudiness in your wine before you bottle it. Now, here's a little thing. Um, you know how I said anybody can make wine as long as you can read directions? Well, I'm a little nervous because as I was taking all my stuff out to start bottling, I found a little packet that says packet number six. So I'm not sure if I forgot to put it in or if it was from an old kit that was just mixed around. So I'm gonna taste the wine before I go through the whole bottling process and just kind of make sure that it's okay because I'm not sure if I messed the whole thing up or not. Um, so we'll take a look at that. So the equipment that I need today, obviously I have my wine in my carboy. You have your airlock on it with the plug. And you should have a wine thief, some tubing, and a bottle filler. And I'll put some extra pictures in the video so you can see what each item looks like specifically. I have a clamp on my wine thief so that it doesn't go down too far into the sediment because we don't want to get that gross stuff from the bottom. And then I also have another clip that kind of squeezes it off so in case I needed to stop uh, the flow for whatever reason that I could do that immediately. Then the bottle filler here, um, you can't see it, but there's a tiny little piece of plastic that comes down and it kind of closes off the flow until it hits the bottom of the wine. Okay, so I re-sanitized everything just because my hands were on it, but now I have my carboy ready. I'm gonna stick my wine thief into my carboy taking care not to hit the bottom of the sediment. And then I've got just a little bit into this glass right here, just to make sure that it's okay. Just a little bit, and then I pinched it off. It's gonna drip a little bit here. Okay, it's still clear. It smells delicious. Let's see if it tastes okay. It's okay. Still needs to be chilled, needs to be aged a little bit, but I know I can get to my bottling now, which was a little scary for me. I was like, did I just ruin a whole batch? So I have a towel down here. I have it up in a box just so you can see it. Obviously the bottles need to be lower than the carboy. I bought 12 glass bottles from Amazon. You can buy them from your local uh, distributor as well. I also have a bunch that I'm just recycling. Just peel the labels off, I sanitize them, and now we're getting ready to go ahead and bottle. So I stick my, oh, turn it a little bit, bottle filler in, unclamp, and it's just flowing. You want to get it up to your neck, but not too high, because of course, you want the cork to be able to fit inside. And I don't even have to pinch it off, I just lift it up. It's gonna drip just like a little bit, but it's not gonna make a mess. Put it right into the next bottle. So I got a few more bottles lined up here. Just flowing. It's normally a lot more seamless than this when you're doing it yourself. Obviously for video, I just stop and edit in a little bit. So I've dripped a couple of extra times. Normally that wouldn't happen. But, and I pay attention to when it's getting up to the top of the bottle, remembering that that wine, um, the bottle filler is taking up room as well. So I don't want to overflow, but I want to get it just up to the neck of the bottle. And the, with the wine we have here, it'll fill probably 24, maybe 25 bottles. And in the next step, I will show you how I cork the bottle. As you're filling your bottles, you do need to pay attention to your wine thief, making sure that it is still continuing with the flow, however, not getting too close to that sediment. Bottling day is my favorite day. It's very cathartic to just see it filling up so quickly and smoothly and knowing that I'll soon get to taste it. So 
our bottles are all filled, the next step is to cork your bottles. And you need a corker, like I have right here. And you need some corks, which I have right here. And you might say, hmm, what are they doing in water? Why do you have them on a, in a pot on the stove? Well, some people believe you should not soak your corks. Some people believe you must. I'm not sure either way which is best, but since I want to make sure that they are sanitary, and since I'm using a handheld corker, I need them to be a little bit more flexible than they are. So for my purposes, I boil my corks. No more than three, four minutes just to get them a little bit of softness in there. Because once you do cork um, the actual bottles, the corks will have absorbed some of the liquid from the steam and the boiling and you don't want that liquid to get into your wine and ruin your wine. So we make sure that we steam them just a little bit so they don't get too much, they get just soft enough. Take them out, let them dry a little bit, they're sanitized, and then you will see me trying to cork some bottles. So I'm here with my hand corker. Looks almost like a medieval torture device. It's got a hole in the bottom of it. I've got my sanitized, soaked cork and I kind of just stick it in there, in the little hole, and then you gotta squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it tight, which is the hard part. And I also happen to have fishing line or monofilament, and I stick it just in the top of the bottle so that when I put the cork in and release it, any of the gases that have built up in the, either in the cork or just in the bottle, they can be released, and then I'll pull that monofilament. Mono so I place the corker on top of the bottle with the monofilament, and I push down all the way and with any luck it should be flush with the top of the bottle you can see the monofilament sticking out I'm going to leave that there for a few moments just until it kind of gets any gases out that it needs to and I'll continue to cork my 24 bottles of Sauvignon Blanc as you can see I've got a perfect case here of wine bottles that are corked. We're gonna leave it upright for a day or two just till let the cork settle in and then start handing them out to friends and they should be stored on their sides. Now I'm gonna zoom in a little closely. You can see some of the corks didn't quite go down all the way. That's not good but it's not the end of the day. Like um, I could drink those within a week or two and it's not gonna be an issue but most of them should be flush with the top of the bottle. You can also foil your corks and they just sell these little things you put on top and dip them in boiling water and it sucks right onto it. I don't need to bother doing that. I also don't bother putting labels on my wine because like these I wanna be able to reuse and the recycled bottles, whatever, nobody really cares. Those are gonna be my personal ones. Um, but I'll just label them with just like a dry erase marker or even a Sharpie just so I can keep track of what it is. And uh, that's that. So please tell me what you think. Are you gonna give this a try? Are you gonna try making your own wine? Have you tried making your own wine? Do you wanna see me detail any of the process again? Um, what other videos do you want me to do? I, I wanna hear from you, let me know. Make a comment below, share with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.